Achieving Transfusion Reduction in Elective Primary Joint Replacement. Hello, I'm Linda Campbell, the Patient Blood Management Clinical Nurse Consultant at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. Charlie's is located in Perth, Western Australia. It's a tertiary hospital of around 600 beds and we recruit patients from the metro area as well as across the state. In 2012, we reviewed our transfusion rates in elective primary joints. Back then you had a very good chance of being transfused in relation to this surgery. Although transfusion can be life-saving, it is not without risk and impacts on patient safety. We used the National Blood Authority's PBM guidelines and put in some strategies with the aim of reducing transfusion and improving patient pre-op function. These strategies included early assessment of haemoglobin and iron stools and review of red cell prescribing practices. By aiming for normal haemoglobin, ferritin greater than 100 and transferrin saturation greater than 20%, we ensure that the patient has sufficient iron stores to recover their own haemoglobin following surgery with significant blood loss. Our haematologist created an assessment and treatment algorithm which provides a pathway to recommend oral or intravenous iron or other treatment when the patient is initially screened by PBM. Next, we had to change the culture of transfusion and this was done in collaboration with our transfusion committee. We reviewed transfusion practice and revised the guidelines to focus on transfusing to relieve the symptoms of anemia rather than focusing on improving the haemoglobin. This message was reinforced by changing transfusion associated documents. We also implemented a single unit guideline for non-bleeding patients. There were posters and multiple education sessions to disseminate and reinforce the PBM messages. When you look at the transfusion rate post PBM from 2013, you can see a tremendous difference. Even though Charlie's treats patients with complex medical problems, it is now uncommon to receive transfusion. In 2015, we transfused 16 patients from over 400 elective primary joints. We've changed the way we transfuse, not only on the orthopaedic ward, but also hospital-wide. Our single unit transfusion rate is around 71% across all disciplines, and despite an increase in hospital activity, we have reduced our use of red cells by 26% over the past few years. Predictably, the challenges arose from treating patients that live hundreds of kilometres from the hospital. The logistics of arranging blood tests, receiving and reviewing results and arranging treatment have highlighted the importance of establishing good communication pathways and support between the patient's GP, the patient and the hospital treating team. Networking and providing education outside the hospital setting has meant that we are able to provide the same care to patients even though they may challenge us geographically. The PBM paradigm is built on evidence-based practice. It is one of the few areas of healthcare which results in improved patient outcomes, reduced risks to patients and cost savings that can all be made at the same time.